What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin Svensson and today we're going to be talking about the big picture. A lot of you guys have been asking for a shorter video and I'm going to give you guys a short video here today. I've been doing a ton of live streams kind of you know trying to help you guys navigate your way through these crazy times giving you guys my thoughts my analysis my opinions but I'm going to try to wrap up my thoughts in a shorter length video. So where do I even begin? Um, guys, I just want to first off give a huge shout out to Mark Demisel. Mark Demisel has been a huge help here on my, on my channel, you know, since the beginning of the year. He was one of the first big influencers to share my videos. And I don't even know if I would be doing this or if I would even be here without, you know, without Mark's help. So Mark, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to put some links to Mark's channel in the description in his Twitter. You guys can follow him there. He's got some really, you know, he's a, he's a crypto veteran. He's got some really in interesting things to say some unique perspectives um you know he's a bit you know he's a big risk taker and that is of course why he's made so much money in the past so again shout out to mark thank you so much um highly appreciate all of your your help and your efforts in the crypto space in general so guys let's get right into the video but let's talk about you know what are my thoughts here on everything that's been going on um you know recently we fell below the yearly support um, as you guys know, I don't, I didn't view this pullback as a bear market, right? This whole area that we were looking at here for most of this year, I didn't consider this a bear market, right? All that happened was we had a, we had a, we had a strong push to the upside and we started trading horizontally and we finally hit some lower lows. So in my opinion, this right here is the beginning of the bear market, right? This right here, in my opinion, is the start of the bear market. So, you know, what does that mean? What, you know, how am I, how am I approaching this? A lot of people out there are wondering, you know, why do I think it's the price is going to go down to 2500, which, you know, we're less than $2000 away from that price. But people still think it's too low. People are wondering, you know, why 2500, Kev? Well, I think it guys, I think it's actually very valuable to compare past performance to what's happening now. Not that we should rely on it, not that, you know, what's happening here is going to happen here exactly. You know, what the, the purpose that it serves, looking at past price history and comparing it to now, the purpose that it serves for me is it shows me what's possible, right? It shows me what, you know, the, it, you know, the things that have happened in, in, in the past, in history, are bound to repeat again, you know, not identically or anything in, of that sort. You know, it's not going to be the exact same moves, but it just shows you what's possible, um, so I do, I do like to make this comparison, guys. I do like to, I do like to look at, you know, the, the 2014 crash to what's happening now. I'm just going to pull up this image here. Um, you know, on the left, we have the 2014 crash. Um, I didn't, I didn't put this image together. I found this on Google. It was just, you know, I just think it's a, you know, a good, a good image to use. And if you, if you're looking at, if you're looking at the volume profile right now, we're sitting here right here at the $4,200 level, right? I was, I was trying to tell a lot of you guys out there that 4,200 is at least gonna act as temporary support. Um, I was saying that before we even broke below the yearly low, but before we even broke below 5,800 guys, I was saying 4,200 is looking like the most likely temporary, at least temporary support level. Now, of course, the person who made this illustration thinks that the price is gonna bounce from here. I don't necessarily agree with this, right? I'm just using this just because it's a good illustration. You know, it, it, it's, you know, it wasn't really a hard prediction to make, you know, that $4,200, you know, support prediction, temporary support. It wasn't, it wasn't really hard to make. If you're looking at volume profile, it was pretty clear that if we fell below 5,800, there was virtually no support until 4,200. So in my opinion, that was a really easy prediction to make. Um, but you know, what's going to happen from here? A lot of you guys are wondering what's going to happen from here. But once again, let's just look at this image. The next support is about $2,500. So if 4,200 can't hold, we're looking at about a $2,500 low. And I think that a $2,500 low is the, the lowest Bitcoin's going to go. I don't think, you know, I, I feel like the, su the supply of Bitcoin is too scarce at this point is being bought up by too many people for the price to fall that low. You guys, I mean, vol the volume profile tool is an extremely helpful tool to use just so you can see where the volume is sitting from a horizontal perspective so you know exactly what price points we're looking at. It's harder, it's harder to tell when you're looking at volume vertically. It's better to look at it horizontally sometimes. Uh, but, you know, below 4,200, we're looking at 2,500 as the next major support. Um, and I do think it's likely that we do break down. Why do I think that, guys? Why do I think that we're going to be going lower 
than 4200 a lot of you guys are asking the, i think i think that this bull run guys there was a lot of there was a lot of upside manipulation a lot of spoofing a lot of people putting fake buy orders into the market to make it look like the demand was higher than it was right and there was so much media hype and the price was i think the price just got far too overextended to the upside um you know a lot of people a lot of people are talking about the rsi right now the one reason i don't really care too much about what the rsi is saying is because you know during this entire bull run the rsi was overextended to the upside during the entire bull run guys you know if if you were guys if you were trading based on the rsi during this bull run you would have been you would have been you know uh, you know short uh, selling or taking short positions and it would have it would have been, you know misled you in the wrong direction right the rsi was completely overextended to the upside the entire the entire way up but that didn't mean we needed to stop moving up right the price kept going the sentiment was up guys the crowd thought the price was going to go up the price kept going up um so you know if you're if you're going to do contrarian analysis if you're going to get if you're going to bet against the crowd in bitcoin a lot of times you get screwed right everyone thought during this bull run that the price was going to go up and it kept going up right so if you bet against the crowd if you were a contrarian then you would have gotten screwed right you would have you know either sold or tried to make a short and or tried to take a short position and gotten wrecked on the way up right so in bitcoin guys it's not necessarily a good idea to bet against the crowd because as you know uh the crowd is a lot of times correct in the crypto market because it guys this this whole market is based on speculation there is no set value for bitcoin the cost the cost to mine bitcoin changes based on the environment the the price to mine gold is set in stone the price to mine bitcoin is not set in stone it can change guys if you know if bitcoin for whatever reason had a flash crash and it, the price was sitting here i'm not saying this is likely i'm just saying if this happened and and you know a lot of people claim that if the price goes below a certain price you can't mine bitcoin and everyone will stop mining and it will die. Well guys, if that's the case and this happens, bitcoin is fundamentally flawed. If the price of bitcoin can't go below a certain price because miners won't be able to mine it anymore, well then bitcoin is fundamentally flawed and we shouldn't even be investing in it in the first place. Now, I don't agree with that, right? I believe that no matter what price, actually I know that no no, no matter what price bitcoin goes to, it can still be mined and it will still be profitable and the environment will adjust the difficulty will adjust and it'll, it'll be just fine guys no matter what price we go to here okay <clears throat> don't believe all of the you know the the youtubers who really just don't know what they're talking about you guys you need to be careful about who you're listening to in this space people lying saying that the price can't go below you know people saying that there's guaranteed prices for bitcoin guys there, there's no guaranteed price for bitcoin at all why 2500 well i think that you know we have the under below 4200 it's looking like 2500 is the most critical support level and i think that we had too much we had too much um there was too much hype too much media hype too much too much manipulation too much spoofing you know tether was being used during this pump and to to manipulate the price to the upside so i just think guys you know it's all speculation it's just my best guess i could be wrong Guys, I just think, you know, I think going from $250 to $20,000 in a single swing uh, uh, is just a little, it's just a little bit too much. You know, guys, it just doesn't seem very likely to me that we finally, <clears throat> we finally break into a bear market and then, the, you know, people think the price is just going to bounce up um, and, you know, we're just going to go to the moon again. I, I, I don't think that this is the more likely scenario, guys. Um, I think... I think just because of how much hype we had on the way up, we're most likely we're most likely similar to what we saw here. You know, right now if we're looking at the the past price history, we're in this stage where we have the first break, we have the first break below these prices, right? The price just first falls below and then it has a second leg down. I think we're going to see something similar, guys. I think we're going to, you know, this is our first break below the yearly support. Um, you know, maybe we have some sideways trading. And then we have a second leg down. Um, and, you know, of course, at some point we find support and push back up. Guys, again, it's all just speculation. It's all just speculation. I don't really, you know, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. My guess is as good as your guess. If we're, if we're, if we're going to compare this move to the move here in 2013, 2014, the first, time, the first time that we got to see the sell volume here pick up, you know, we, you know, the price was consolidating here, and the first time the, the, the sell volume really kicked in 
was during was during this area when we fir- when we first broke below this low here and this low here. We had the first move below support was the first time we saw the sell volume pick up a ton, right? And if we're going to look at what's happening now, this break below yearly support was the first time we saw the sell volume pick up, right? And in my opinion, it just doesn't seem likely that the price is just going to bounce up here and all of a sudden we're going to just be mooning again. It doesn't, guys, I don't think this is very likely. You know, a lot of people bought in at 6,000. If the price bounces up from here, there's going to be a ton of downside, guys, there's going to be a lot of selling pressure because a lot lot of people that bought in at 6,000 are not very happy right now. And if the price comes back to 6,000, a lot of them are going to take their profits and, and sell right and try to at least get the money back that they put in the market right so i don't think guys in my opinion bear markets don't last you know 2 weeks right we've been below yearly support for about a couple weeks now bear markets don't last 2 weeks i think we have a little bit more time to go and, the, and i think the fact that we came down to 4200 this fast tells me we're probably going lower um you know we might see a little bit of upside here a little bit of sideways trading you know, who knows what's going to happen, guys, in the short term. But I think ultimately the price is going to have another leg down, whether we find temporary support at 3000 and eventually eventually bounce off of two, 20, around 2500 I think, before seeing, you know, a bottom build out in the price eventually, you know, pushing up something like this. You know, maybe we pull back again. Who knows what's going to happen, guys? But I think this is the more likely scenario. We fall below 40, you know, we have a little bit of support here at 4,200, fall to the next major support level of 2,500, just because I think we had too much upside too fast. Um, I don't think, guys, I don't think the bear market's just going to last a week or two. Um, it, you know, this bear market didn't last a week or two. You know, we broke below the yearly support here, had a little bit of moves, a little bit of sideways trading, and then we broke below, and then we broke down again, and then had some sideways movement at a nice low point and stayed there for, you know, almost a whole year before pushing back up, right? I don't think, guys, I really don't think the bear market can just last a week and we come back up and everything's fine. Or or even we just hit 4,200 and trade sideways for this period of time and then push back up. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem likely to me at this point. You know, what's, you know, what's most likely going to happen, in my opinion, is we have a little bit of sideways trading. We have another leg down, right? And then we bounce back up and consolidate, you know, in this area here, right? And I'm looking, oh guys, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the $2,500 price level, right? This is all that needs to happen is we have a little bit of sideways trading, another leg down, and then we find a nice low here and build back out, right? I don't think this is really that much of an unreasonable call to make, right? This, in my opinion, having a little bit of sideways movement, having a, another leg down, finding a nice low, and then pushing back up seems to be the most likely scenario Again, guys, bear markets don't last one week, and we don't just come up here and, and bounce out here again. It just doesn't make sense to me that that would happen. Based on volume profile, based on volume profile, 2,500 is the next major support, and I don't think the market's going to be going lower than that, right? I don't think so, guys. So, you know, there, there, is a, there is a chance that we're at the bottom now. Of course, there's always a chance for that. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are taking different approaches to this. If you ask Mark DeMiso, you know, he's going all in right now. Um, of course, he's taking a big risk and he's, you know, hoping to get a big reward. You know, but in the past, Mark took huge risks in 2013 and he, you know, he had huge rewards going into this bull run, right? So if you, you know, if you look at what Mark has done, he's made a lot of money because he's taken huge risks. The way that I'm approaching this situation, guys, the way that I'm approaching this, is different, you know, it's different than the way that Mark's approaching it. I'm coming at it a little bit more conservatively. I'm a little bit more pessimistic about the short term. Of course, I believe in crypto in the long term. That's why I'm here. Um, you know, emerging markets are very speculative in the beginning, guys. In the be- you know, when, when there's a new market and it's an emerging market, it tends to be extremely speculative. And that's the, that's the stage that we're in right now, the speculative stage of cryptocurrencies. So, you know, we're in the speculative stage. I think we have to be careful. We're, you know, who knows what's going to happen? There's a lot of big Bitcoin holders out there that can dump at any time, that can still be taking profits now, that are still taking profits now. Um, so we have to be careful, guys. I'm coming at this, you know, I'm approaching this whole, you know, uh, my process is a, is a lot more conservative than other people's process. 
I don't want to catch a falling knife. I don't want to just go all in here and risk that it's not the bottom, right? I want to, I want to, you know, I want to, hopefully I can be taking positions on the way down um, and then, you know, also continue to take positions on the way up, however it plays out, guys. I want to, I want to be t taking positions on the way down and the way up. That way I can, you know, it's a lot less risky. You can make sure that you're catching the bottom, right? If you go all in now, you're not, you know, you're not sure if you're catching the bottoms. But if you're, if you're, if you're accumulating and you're slowly entering the market, guys, you can make sure that at some point you do catch the bottom. And there are ways to do that. There are ways to make sure that you do catch the bottom. And that's what my Patreon is all about. So uh, based on popular demand, a lot of people were messaging me saying, Kevin, I really want to be a part of your Patreon, but I don't want to pay $100 a month. So what I'm doing is I'm raising the limit for the early adopters so that 100 people can join. I'm Guys, it's, it, it's, it's going to be a hard cap, 100 people max, right? So there's only 50 slots left. So if you do want to get in, there's 50 slots left in the early adopter stage, and I'm having a hard cap at 100 people. From a more short-term perspective, this doesn't feel like a long-term bottom, right? On Patreon, we took action, you know, here, just to make sure that it is the bottom, that we're, we're at least prepared for it, right? Guys, my strategy is to average my way into the market. I don't want to catch a falling knife. I think that's a little too risky. Again, I think we are we we were, we're far too overextended to the upside. We're just starting to see some more downside, so I do expect to see you know. I, I I'm super confident that we're going to see the twenty five hundred dollar price level show up. It is possible that we go lower than that. That's why, that's why I am doing. That's why I am you know taking. That's why the approach that I'm taking is not very. It's it's a lot less risky, guys. I'm averaging in very slowly, and I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure that I catch the bottom and I'm going to make sure that my Patreons understand what I'm doing to catch the bottom. Um, so, you know, it's a less risky play. Maybe it's less rewarding because maybe we did hit the bottom here, but I don't think so, guys. I think we have a lot more downside to go. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you found this, val this video valuable. I'm not really sure if I answered all of your questions. Again, this this whole this whole market is just super speculative, right? It's so, you know, anyone's guess is as good as anyone else's guess. We don't know what's going to happen. So the way that I'm approaching this is I'm I'm taking it slowly, guys. I'm slowly slowly going to get my feet with slowly going to start accumulating. And again, I'm going to make sure that I catch the bottom. That's my goal. I'm going to make sure that I catch the bottom. And the only way to do that is by taking it nice and slow, in my opinion, guys. Of course, it could be less rewarding in the end, but uh, I think that it's the best approach to take. But anyway, guys, thank you all for, you know, watching my videos. The support has been amazing recently, guys. There, you know, I honestly didn't think that that this level of generosity existed in the world, but I think, I guess it does, because you guys are super generous, have been supporting the channel, you know, making donations, subscribing, liking the videos, joining Patreon, guys. It's been a blast. It's been a blast. Um, so, you know, I hope you guys are you're finding value in my content. I hope, you know, if you've been listening to me this year, if you've been listening to me this year and you haven't bought Bitcoin, well, congratulations, guys, because you saved yourself you saved yourself a lot of struggle, okay? You saved yourself a lot of struggle. So, you know, pat yourself on the, pat yourself on the back if you didn't buy Bitcoin yet. Um, if you're starting to accumulate now, that's probably a good idea. If you're starting to buy now, that's probably a good idea. We don't know where the bottom is going to be. It could be here. I think we're going to see lower prices, right? But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you found this valuable. I hope I answered a lot of your guys' questions. Again, I ha I'm opening up the Patreon early adopter slot, so there's 50 more people that can join. So I'm sure it's going to fill up real fast. Again, guys, we're going to catch the bottom, right? We're going to take it nice and slow, and we're going to catch the bottom, and we're going to average our way in nice and slow. Bring down that risk. You know, have, you know we're going to make sure that we're... We're, I'm going to make sure that, you know, we're approaching this whole thing a lot less risky. You guys, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope, you know, I mean, I wish you guys all the best of luck out there. You know, this was this was kind of a hard video for me to make and talk about, but I hope I did well. Yeah, I, I wish you guys all the best, no matter what you're doing. You know, I truly hope that everyone out there is doing well. I wish you all the best. I know a lot of you guys are struggling right now. 
and you know it's you know it's it's just lessons to be learned guys failures are lessons failures are more or more valuable than wins right losses are you can win you can learn a lot more from losses than you can from wins so you know if you are if you are hurting now at least do yourself a favor and learn from your mistakes and don't make the same mistakes again you know trade smart or don't trade at all and, and as always, remember, good trading opportunities are like trains. There's always another one coming, right? So, guys, just ha- hang in there. We're going to get through this. Again, the crypto market is still very new. I- I'm very hopeful for the future. I'm pessimistic near term, very hopeful long term, right? I wouldn't be here if I wasn't, you know, hopeful for the long term. You know, be sure to, you know, hit the notification bell. I'm probably going to be going live soon. Um, at some point in the near future, I'm going to be doing a lot of live streams at, you know, when Bitcoin's doing interesting things, I'm going to be going live. So, you know, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and I will see you all in the next one.